What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to talk about retarding forces. Now, recall that for one-dimensional motion, so for example, if we have a particle moving in the x direction, okay, uh, the force uh, that can be applied okay, on, this for, on this object would relate to its acceleration by this general equation of motion f which is a function of position velocity and time and this is equal to mass times the acceleration of the particle so here the force can be a function of position velocity and time or it can all be a function of x, x dot, or t, or a combination of those three. And the resultant, f, can be of several forces. So, for example, it can have, for example, friction as well as gravitational force or even normal force. However, for instance, if we have... A particle that falls down in a constant gravitational field okay so this mass experiences a constant gravitational force so the constant gravitational force is given by FG and by definition this is equal to the mass times the gravitational field or the acceleration due to gravity. Gravity. Now, for simple cases, this force alone is sufficient to describe the equation of motion of freely falling object. And this is what you have when you dis when you discuss uh, free fall motion. Uh, when due to your general physics class. However, real-life cases need to consider retarding forces. So these retarding forces are actually resisting forces that is usually that are usually opposes the motion itself. So for example, if your object is falling down, so that means the velocity is along the y direction, And it is going down. So the retarding force associated to this velocity or motion would be opposite that direction. It's called that FR. Now these are commonly known as air resistance, but they can also exist when objects move in other forms of fluids, for example. Like, for example, a particle or an object uh, falling, down an, a, falling down the sea. So, considering these two forces, this net force will now become a combination of two forces. Gravitational force and your retarding forces. And the equation of motion associated with this would be m y double dot j hat. Now, for most cases, the retarding force fr is a function of speed, and usually it is a proportional. It is proportional to the power of the speed. Fr is a function of speed. And this is equal to negative m k v n v hat. So this is what we call a power law approximation. So here k is a positive constant which indicates the strength of the retarding force. m is the mass of the object. v hat is the direction or the unit vector 
along the direction of the velocity. So by definition, this is equal to the velocity vector divided by the speed. Okay. Usually, experimentally, n is approximately equal to 1, especially for relatively slow particles. However, for speeds uh, around speed of uh, sound, n is approximately equal to 2. Okay, so that means usually for slow frequency, uh, for slow particles, this retarding force varies linearly with speed. And for a little bit more faster speeds, like for example, the velocity or speeds are close to the speed of sound, this would be a quadratic case. Uh, in any case, okay, uh, the usual application of Newton's law will be applied to this. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how, in a more, uh, in a more explicit way, how these forces, for example, uh, varies or affects a motion of um, an object moving in a horizontal direction. And then we're going to move to objects moving along the vertical direction, and we're going to combine the two motions leading to the discussion on uh, projectile motion that involves air resistance. Okay, so that's a quick review of retarding forces, also known as your velocity-dependent forces or resisting force or re air resistance. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something today, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.